Well, are you ready to get into y'all's word today? I am as well. I want to invite you to open your Bibles with me to Exodus chapter 13. And we're going to begin with verse 20 in just a moment. We're tracking along with this week's Torah portion. And the Torah portion is entitled, When He Sent. Today's message is entitled, Following the Cloud and the Fire. So let's get right into the verses and you'll begin to understand why I have entitled the message in that way. Verse 20, And they departed from Sukkoth. This is speaking of the children of Israel as they have come out of Mitzrayim, out of Egypt, and they're moving toward the wilderness and they're going to the promised land. And they departed from Sukkoth and camped in Atham at the edge of the wilderness. And Yah went before them by day. This is very important. Yah went before them by day in a column of cloud to lead the way. Yah was leading the way in a column of cloud by day and by night in a column of fire to give them light so as to go by day and night. So Yah himself was leading the way of his people, the children of Israel, out of Mitzrayim. They're going to go into the wilderness and then they're going to be heading toward the promised land. But the point to be made today is that Yah led them by day and by night. It says in verse 22, the column of cloud did not cease by day nor the column of fire by night before the people. So he never left them alone. He always led them. He told them when to break camp and when to move forward, where to go, where to camp. He was leading them every step of the way. The Numbers 9, verse 15 says, And on the day that the dwelling place was raised up, this is talking about the tabernacle in the wilderness. The cloud covered the dwelling place, the tent of the witness. From evening until morning, it was above the dwelling place like the appearance of fire. So all night long, from evening until morning, the presence of Yah was in the form of a fire. And that fire brought light, verse 16. Thus it was continually, the cloud covered it by day and the appearance of fire by night. And whenever the cloud was taken up from above the tent, after that the children of Israel would depart. So the children of Israel didn't move except that the cloud started to move. They stayed right there until Yah led by the cloud or by the fire. And in the place where the cloud dwelt, there the children of Israel would camp. At the mouth of Yah, the children of Israel departed, and at the command of Yah, they camped. So Yah was commanding. Yah was leading by this pillar of cloud by day and this fire by night. They remained camped as long as the cloud dwelt above the dwelling place. So they didn't move if Yah wasn't moving. Even when the cloud lingered many days above the dwelling place, the children of Israel guarded the charge of Yah and did not depart. So even if the cloud remained for a long time, they didn't get out ahead of Yah. They stayed right there and waited until Yah led them. And so it was when the cloud was above the dwelling place a few days. According to the mouth of Yah, they camped. And according to the mouth of Yah, they would depart. And so it was when the cloud dwelt only from evening until morning, just one night. When the cloud was taken up in the morning, then they departed whether by day or by night. Whenever the cloud was taken up, they departed. Whether two days 
or a new moon, a month, or a year, that the cloud lingered above the dwelling place to dwell upon it, the children of Israel camped and did not depart. But when it was taken up, they departed. At the mouth of Yah, they camped. And at the mouth of Yah, they departed. In essence, they followed the command of Yah. They followed his leadership, his guidance. And they didn't go anywhere. They didn't do anything unless Yah directed it by the cloud by day and the fire by night. They guarded the charge of Yah at the mouth of Yah by the hand of Moshe. And then Exodus chapter 40, beginning with verse 34, it says, And the cloud covered the tent of appointment, and the esteem of Yah filled the dwelling place. And Moshe was not able to come into the tent of appointment because the cloud dwelt on it. And the esteem of Yah filled the dwelling place, and when the cloud was taken up from above the dwelling place, keep that in mind, the dwelling place. We're going to talk about how in the new covenant, believers become the dwelling place of the Spirit. And when the cloud was taken up from above the dwelling place, the children of Israel went onward in all their journeys. But if the cloud was not taken up, they did not set out till the day that it was taken up. For the cloud of Yah was on the dwelling place by day, and fire was on it by night, before the eyes of all the house of Israel in all their journeys. Are you getting the picture? Yah desires to lead His people, and He will lead us through the wilderness of this life. He will guide every step. He will tell us when to go. He will tell us when to stay. He will tell us what to say. We're going to see all of that in Scripture in just a moment. Numbers chapter 14, verse 14, And they shall say to the inhabitants of this land that they have heard that you, Yah, are in the midst of these people that you, Yah, are seen eye to eye and that your cloud stands above them and you go before them in a column of cloud by day and in a column of fire by night. So even the nations will hear that Yah is with His people and He is leading them personally with a cloud by day and a fire by night. And then I want you to see something really interesting here in Exodus chapter 14. We're going to pick up with verse 19. This tells us that the cloud and the fire was used as a defensive mechanism to defend the children of Israel from their enemies. Let's take a look at it. And the messenger of Elohim, who went before the camp of Israel, moved and went behind them. And the column of cloud went from before them, leading the way, and stood behind them to protect them. And came between the camp of the Mitzrites, the Egyptians. Pharaoh had come out with his army, with his horsemen and chariots, and he was coming after the children of Israel. And so we see the column of cloud shifting from before the people to behind them, to protect them. And it was the cloud and the darkness, and it gave light by night, and the one did not come near the other all the night. In other words, it was darkness to the Egyptians. They couldn't see. But to the children of Israel, it was light. Hallelujah. And Moshe stretched out his hand over the sea, and Yah caused the sea to go back by a strong east wind all that night and made the sea into dry land, and the waters were divided. And the children of Israel went into the midst of the sea on dry ground, and the waters were a wall to them on their right 
and on their left. And the Mitzrites, the Egyptians, pursued and went after them into the midst of the sea, all the horses of Pharaoh, his chariots, and his horsemen. And it came to be in the morning watch that Yah looked down upon the army of the Mitzrites through the column of fire and cloud, and he brought the army of the Mitzrites into confusion. So Yah is looking at the Mitzrites, the Egyptians, through the column of fire and cloud. And he brings the army of Pharaoh into confusion. He's fighting Israel's battles. Praise Yah. And he's doing so with the mechanism of the fire in the cloud. And he took off their chariot wheels so that they drove them with difficulty. And the Mitzrites said, let us flee from the face of Israel for Yah fights for them against the Mitzrites. Then Yah said to Moshe, stretch out your hand over the sea and let the waters come back upon the Mitzrites on their chariots and on their horsemen. And Moshe stretched out his hand over the sea and the sea returned to its usual flow at the break of day with the Mitzrites fleeing into it. Thus Yah overthrew the Mitzrites in the midst of the sea and the waters returned and covered the chariots and the horsemen and all the army of Pharaoh that came into the sea after them and not even one was left of them. And the children of Israel walked on dry ground in the midst of the sea. And the waters were a wall to them on their right and on their left. Thus Yah saved Israel that day out of the hand of the Mitzrites. And Israel saw the Mitzrites dead on the seashore. And Israel saw the great work which Yah had done in Mitzrayim. And the people feared Yah and believed Yah and his servant Moshe. And so again, we want to make the point that Yah leads his people. He leads them every step of the way. And in the case of this account in the Torah, it was by a cloud by day and a fire by night. Yah even fights the battles of his people. And so we're going to see that there are parallels to this Torah account in the New Covenant. We're going to go over to the Good News account of Luke chapter 3. And we're going to begin with verse 21. And we're going to see that Yeshua was filled with the cloud and the fire. Let's read it. And it came to be when all the people were immersed, water baptized, Yeshua also being immersed and praying, the heaven was opened and the set apart spirit descended in bodily form like a dove upon him. And a voice came from heaven saying, you are my son, the beloved, in you I did delight. And so Yeshua presented himself to Yohanan the immerser at the Yarden, and Yohanan agreed to immerse Yeshua. And when Yeshua came up out of the water, he began to pray. We don't have exactly in Scripture what he prayed, but we know what he received. He began to pray, and when he did, the heaven was opened, and the set-apart spirit of Yah descended upon him in bodily form like a dove and remained upon him. And now, Yah is going to lead him every step of the way. In other words, the cloud by day and the fire by night came upon Yeshua and dwelt within Yeshua. Let's take a look at that. Luke chapter 4 and verse 1. And Yeshua being filled with the set-apart spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit 
into the wilderness. So now Yeshua is being led by the cloud and the fire. He has the set-apart spirit of Yah upon him and living within him. He was filled with the cloud and the fire, and he was led by the spirit into the wilderness to face off with the devil. Look at verse 13. And when the devil had ended every trial, he went away from him until a convenient time, and Yeshua returned, notice, in the power of the spirit to Galil or to the Galilee, and news of him went out through all the surrounding country. And so there is a power of the Spirit. There is an equipping, an empowerment. We're going to talk about that in just a few moments. But we see that Yeshua is being led by the cloud and the fire. He's being led by the set-apart Spirit of Yah. John chapter 3 and verse 34 says this, For he whom Elohim has sent speaks the words of Elohim, for Elohim does not give the Spirit by measure. So Yeshua received the full measure of the set-apart Spirit of Yah. And Yeshua promised His taught ones that they too would receive the set-apart Spirit of Yah, that they too would be led by the cloud and the fire. Look at Acts chapter 1, beginning with verse 4. And meeting with them, he commanded them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which you have heard from me. What is the promise of the Father? It's the promise of the indwelling set-apart Spirit of Yah. And Yeshua taught them about the indwelling set-apart spirit of Yah. It says, which you have heard from me, because Yohanan truly immersed in water, but you shall be immersed in the set-apart spirit not many days from now. So when they had come together, they asked him, saying, Master, would you at this time restore the rain to Israel? And he said to them, It is not for you to know times or seasons, which the Father has put in His own authority, but you shall receive power, ability, when the set-apart Spirit has come upon you. And you shall be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Yehudah and Shemarim and to the end of the earth. Notice Yeshua said the set-apart Spirit is going to come upon you. And you remember I made the point earlier that the cloud and the fire was upon or over the dwelling place of Elohim, the tabernacle in the wilderness. So now there's a new dwelling place. And we're going to talk about it right here. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, starting with verse 19. Or do you not know that your body is the dwelling place of the set-apart spirit. So where did the cloud and the fire go? Did it go away? No. The cloud and the fire has come upon a new dwelling place. Every believer can receive and must receive the indwelling set-apart spirit of Yah. Your body is the dwelling place of the spirit, and you are not your own You were bought with a price. What Yah did for the children of Israel in the wilderness by leading them every day, he never stopped. There was not one day where his leadership was not available to the children of Israel. His leadership is available to us as well in the same way to tell us when to go, where to go, What to say to receive equipping and empowerment for ministry, to be able to navigate perilous days. And that's so wonderful, especially in the days we're living in. And so let's look at Acts chapter 2, beginning with verse 1. We'll get a little bit deeper into how 
the cloud and the fire, the spirit of Yah led those early believers. And when the day of the festival of Shavuot had come, they were all with one mind in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from the heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. And it filled all the house where they were sitting. You can't really see a wind unless it's in the form of a cloud. And so you can kind of relate the wind and the cloud. They heard a sound of a rushing mighty wind and it filled all the house where they were sitting and there appeared to them divided tongues as of what? Fire. Fire. And settled on each one of them. And they were all filled with the set apart spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the spirit gave them to speak. These are languages of men that they had never learned. Now in Jerusalem, there were dwelling Yehudim, dedicated men from every nation under the heaven. And when this sound came to be, the crowd came together and were confused because everyone heard them speak in his own language. And they were all amazed and marveled, saying to each other, Look, are not all these who speak Galileans? And then you could go through and read about all those nations. There's a nice long list there. Look at verse 11. We hear them speaking in our own tongues the great deeds of Elohim. And they were all amazed and were puzzled, saying to each other, What does this mean? And others mocking said, They've been filled with sweet wine. In other words, they're drunk. But Kepha, standing up with the eleven, lifted up his voice and said to them, Men of Yehudah and all those dwelling in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen closely to my words. For these men are not drunk, as you imagine, since it is only the third hour of the day. But this is what was spoken by the prophet Yoel. And it shall be in the last days, says Elohim, that I shall pour out of my spirit on all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. They're going to proclaim a word from Elohim. Elohim is going to give them what to say and they're going to speak it. And your young men shall see visions and your old men shall dream dreams. Elohim is going to communicate to believers through visions and dreams. And also on my male servants and on my female servants, I shall pour out my spirit in those days and they shall prophesy. So the cloud and the fire comes to the believer. The leadership of Yah, the guidance of Yah, the empowerment of Yah, the communication that Yah has with believers through visions and dreams has arrived. And he's going to lead them every step of the way. And he's going to lead us every step of the way as well. Acts chapter 2 and verse 21. And it shall be that everyone who calls on the name of Yah shall be saved. Men of Israel, hear these words. Yeshua of Nazareth, a man from Elohim, having been pointed out to you by mighty works and wonders and signs, which Elohim did through him in your midst, as you yourselves also know, this one, Yeshua, given up by the set purpose and foreknowledge of Elohim, you have impaled and put to death through the hands of lawless men, him, Elohim, raised up, having loosed the pangs of death because it was impossible that he could be held in its grip. Verse 36, Therefore let all the house of Israel know for certain that Elohim has made this Yeshua, whom you impaled, both Master and Messiah. And having heard this, they were pierced to the heart and said to Kepha and the rest of the emissaries, Men, brothers, what shall we do? And Kepha said to them, Repent and let each one of you be immersed in the name of Yeshua Messiah for the forgiveness of sins. Notice, and you shall receive 
the gift of the set apart spirit. You're going to receive the cloud and the fire. Believe on Yeshua, repent, be immersed for the forgiveness of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the set apart spirit. For the promise is to you and to your children and to all who are far off, as many as Yah our Elohim shall call. Now go with me over to 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 7. And this passage of scripture is going to describe the empowerment of the spirit, the, the package that you receive as a believer. As Yah wants to empower you for success and empower you for ministry. Let's take a look. And to each one is given the manifestation of the Spirit for profiting. In other words, for the benefit of others. For to one is given a word of wisdom through the Spirit. The word of wisdom is a word from Elohim informing the believer about events that will take place in the future. And to another, a word of knowledge according to the same Spirit. The word of knowledge is Elohim communicating to the believer and informing the believer of something about a person or a situation that the believer would not have known except that Elohim revealed it to him. Verse 9, And to another, belief by the same Spirit. This is unwavering belief. Unwavering belief that receives answered prayer. Unwavering belief that performs miracles. It says, and to another gifts of healing by the same spirit. This is talking about healing a sick body, sicknesses and diseases upon people. And to another operations of powers. This is doing miracles. Hallelujah. Yeshua said we're going to do his works. And he did miracles, signs and wonders. And to another prophecy to proclaim a word that came from Elohim to a person or to a group of people. And to another discerning of spirits. In other words, knowing what kind of spirit is in operation. To another kinds of tongues. In other words, languages you have not learned. They can be languages of men or languages of messengers, angels. And to another interpretation of tongues, to be able to interpret those languages. But one and the same Spirit works all these, distributing to each one individually, in other words, to each believer individually, as it intends. Now, I've heard people say, well, you know, I have the gift of the word of wisdom. And they stop right there. And I want to encourage you not to limit yourself. Because... Yah, by His Spirit, provides gifts that pertain to the need that has presented itself. And so if there's a need for a word of knowledge, then the believer can receive the word of knowledge. If there's a need for a healing, then the believer can get a gift of healing, and so on. And so don't limit Yah by saying, well, I have this or the other. No, the gifts are given according to the need that has presented itself. All right, now let's go over to Acts chapter 3. We're going to begin with verse 1. And let's look at these early believers and how they functioned in these manifestations of the Spirit of Yah and how they were led by the cloud and by the fire. It says, And Kepha and Yohanan were going up to the set-apart place at the hour of prayer, the ninth hour, and a certain man lame from his birth was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the set-apart place, which is called Yaffa, which means lovely or beautiful, to ask alms from those entering into the set-apart place, who seeing Kepha and Yohanan about to go in to the set-apart place, asked for alms. And Kepha with Yohanan looking steadfastly, at him, said, look at us. Now, they have locked in to the leadership of the cloud and the fire. They are 
in the spirit of Yah. Yah is communicating with them. He's going to tell them what to do. He's going to tell them what to say. And a great miracle is going to take place. Let's take a look. And he gave heed to them, expecting to receive whatever from them. But Kepha said, I do not have silver and gold, but what I do possess, this I give you. In the name of Yeshua Messiah of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Now, Elohim told him to say those words. And so he's just following the cloud. And taking him by the right hand, he lifted him up, and immediately his feet and ankle bones were made firm. So that is a working of miracles. It's also a gift of unwavering belief. Verse 8, And leaping up, he stood and walked, and went in with them into the set-apart place, walking and leaping and praising Elohim. And all the people saw him walking and praising Elohim, and they recognized him, that it was he who sat begging alms at the lovely gate of the set-apart place, and they were filled with wonder and amazement at what befell him. So we see Kepha and Yochanan are following the cloud, they're following the fire, they're being led by Yah through His Spirit. They're operating in the manifestations of the gifts of the Spirit. It's wonderful to see. Let's continue. Acts chapter 4 and verse 1. And as they were speaking to the people, the priest and the captain of the set-apart place and the Sadducees came upon them, being annoyed because they taught the people and announced the resurrection from the dead in Yeshua. And they arrested them and put them in jail until the next day, for it was already evening. Verse 7. And having placed them in the middle, set them before the council, they asked, by what power or in what name did you do this? Then Kepha, notice, filled. He's definitely filled. He's being led by Yah through his spirit. Filled with the set-apart spirit, said to them, Rulers of the people and elders of Israel, if today we are called to account for a good deed toward a sick man by whom he has been healed, let it be known to all of you and to all the people of Israel that in the name of Yeshua, Messiah of Nazareth, whom you impaled, whom Elohim raised from the dead by him, this one stands before you healthy. Now he's speaking boldly. This is the stone which was rejected by you builders, which has become the chief cornerstone. And there is no deliverance in anyone else, for there is no other name under the heaven given among men by which we need to be saved. And seeing the boldness of Kepha and Yochanan and perceiving that they were unlearned and ordinary men, they marveled. Well, that gives us all hope, doesn't it? And they recognized that they had been with Yeshua. Well, they were under the influence of the same anointing. The same spirit of Yah that was on Yeshua is on them now and leading them. And seeing the man who had been healed standing with them, they could not contradict it. But when they had commanded them to go aside out of the council, they consulted with one another saying, What shall we do to these men? For indeed, that an outstanding miracle has been done through them is apparent to all those dwelling in Jerusalem, and we are unable to deny it. And there are undeniable miracles coming. Hallelujah. As we follow the cloud, and as we follow the fire, and as we operate in these gifts, the empowerment of Yah by His Spirit, undeniable miracles are coming. But in order that it spreads no further among the people, let us strongly threaten them to speak no more to anyone in this name. And they called them and commanded them not to speak at all, nor to teach in the name of Yeshua. But Kepha and Yochanan answering them said, whether it is right in the sight of Elohim to listen to you more than to Elohim, you judge. For it is impossible for us not to speak of what we saw and heard. There was a compelling by the Spirit of Yah. 
And having threatened them further, they released them, finding no way of punishing them because of the people, because they were all praising Elohim for what had been done. I tell you, you can find an example of the early believers being led by the cloud and the fire in practically every chapter in the book of Acts. We're going to look at a couple of more. Go over with me to Acts chapter 8. We'll pick up with verse 5. And this is Philippe being led by the Spirit of Yah. It says, And going down to the city of Shemeron, Philippe proclaimed Messiah to them, and the crowds with one mind heeded what Philippe said, hearing and seeing the what? The miracles which he did by the power of Yah's Spirit. For unclean spirits came out of many who were possessed, crying with a loud voice, and many who were paralyzed and lame were healed. So there's discerning of spirits and casting out of evil spirits and miracles of healing. And there came to be great joy in that city. Now there was a certain man called Shimon who formerly was practicing magic in the city and astonishing the people of Shemarin, claiming to be someone great to whom they all were giving heed from the least to the greatest, saying, This one is the power of Elohim, which is great. And they were giving heed to him because for a long time he had amazed them with his magic. And when they believed Philippe, as he brought the good news about the reign of Elohim and the name Yeshua Messiah, both men and women were immersed, water baptized. And Shimon himself also believed and when he was immersed, he continued with Philippe and was amazed seeing the miracles and signs which took place. Philippe was following the cloud and the fire. He was empowered by the Spirit of Yah. He was doing miracles and signs. And when the emissaries who were at Jerusalem heard that Shemarin had received the word of Elohim, they sent Kepha and Yohanan to them who when they had come down, prayed for them to receive the set-apart spirit. Every believer must have the set-apart spirit. If you're going to be able to navigate through life, if you're going to be used by Elohim in service to the rain, you must have the set-apart spirit. Then they laid hands on them and they received the set-apart spirit. So the cloud and the fire came to those believers as well. And Shimon, seeing that through the laying on of the hands of the emissaries, the set-apart spirit was given, he offered them money. He thought he could buy it, buy that gift. Saying, give me this authority too, so that anyone I lay hands on shall receive the set-apart spirit. But Kepha said to him, let your silver perish with you because you thought to buy the gift of Elohim through money. Now, Kepha is in the Spirit. He's being led by the Spirit of Yah. He's discerning what is going on here. You have neither part nor lot in this matter, for your heart is not right before Elohim. Repent, therefore, of this evil of yours, and plead with Elohim to forgive you the intention of your heart. For I see that you are poisoned with bitterness and bound by unrighteousness. The word of knowledge. He's operating in that gift. But Shimon answering said, Plead with the master for me, so that none of what you had said shall come upon me. Then after they had earnestly witnessed and spoken the word of Yah, they returned to Jerusalem, bringing the good news in many villages of the Shemaranim. Now, let's continue reading about Philippe because we have another really interesting episode here in Acts chapter 8. We're going to pick up with verse 26. It says, But a messenger of Yah, an angel, spoke to Philippe, 
saying, Arise and go toward the south along the way which goes down from Jerusalem to Azza. This is desert. And he arose and went and saw a man of Cush, a eunuch of great authority under Kandaki, the sovereignness of the Cushites, who was in charge of all her treasury and had come to Jerusalem to worship and was returning. And sitting in his chariot, he was reading the prophet Yeshayahu, or Isaiah. Notice, and the Spirit said to Philip. The Spirit is communicating the words of Yah. Yah is speaking to Philip through the Spirit. Go near and join him in that chariot. And he did that. He obeyed. Look at verse 35. And Philip opened his mouth and beginning at this scripture brought to him the good news, Yeshua. And as they were going on the way, they came to some water and the eunuch said, Look, water, what hinders me from being immersed? And Philip said, If you believe with all your heart, it is permitted. And he answering said, I believe the son of Elohim to be Yeshua the Messiah. And he commanded the chariot to stand still, and both Philip and the eunuch went down into the water, and he immersed him. And when they came up out of the water, notice, the spirit of Yah caught Philip away, and the eunuch saw him no more, for he went his way rejoicing. The spirit of Yah caught Philip away. We don't have great details about what exactly that means. But it could mean that he caught him and pulled him away and headed him on down the road. But he was giving leadership. Yah was leading Philip by his spirit. It could also mean that Philip was caught up in the spirit and transported to another place, and deposited. Either way, the Spirit was involved in moving Philippe from one place to another. And if that dynamic took place in Bible days, in the life of Philippe, it can also take place today. Notice it says, Philippe, however, was found at Ashdod, And passing through, he brought the good news in all the cities until he came to Caesarea. Hallelujah. Well, let's continue looking at another couple of examples. We're going to go over to Acts chapter 9, starting with verse 10. And this is talking about Hananiah being led by the Spirit. And Shaul, or the Apostle Paul, he's not the Apostle at this point, is filled with with the Spirit. Let's read about it. And there was at Damasek a certain taught one. So he was a taught one. Just a normal, common individual. Just walking in the ways of Yeshua. Notice, by name, Hananiah. And the Master said unto him in a vision. Now, Yeshua is speaking to him in a vision. The vision is empowered by Yah through his spirit. That's a way that we receive information. And the master said unto him in a vision, Hananiah, and he said, Here I am, master. And the master said to him, Arise and go to the street called Straight and seek in the house of Yehudah, For one called Shaul of Tarsos. For look, he is praying. He is praying. And has seen in a vision a man named Hananiah coming in and laying his hand on him so as to see again, to receive healing. And so Shaul also sees a vision and he sees a man named Hananiah coming in and laying his hand upon him so that he can see again. 
And Hananiah answered, Master, I have heard from many about this man, how many evils he did to your set-apart ones in Jerusalem. And here he has authority from the chief priest to bind all those calling on your name. He's concerned about himself. But the master said to him, Go, for he is a chosen vessel of mine to bear my name before nations, sovereigns, and the children of Israel. For I shall show him how much he has to suffer for my name. And Hananiah went away and went into the house. He followed the leadership, the direction that came to him in a vision, empowered by the Spirit of Yah. He's following the cloud and the fire. And Hananiah went away and went into the house. And laying his hands on him, he said, Brother Shaul, the master Yeshua, who appeared to you on the way as you came, has sent me so that you might see again and be filled with the set-apart spirit. So you're going to believe. You're going to be filled with a set-apart spirit. He's going to be baptized in water as well. But when he's filled with the Spirit, then the cloud and the fire come upon him. The Spirit of Yah enters into him. And now he can be led every day without cease. Elohim will tell him where to go, what to say. He'll receive power to prophesy. He'll receive Communication through visions and dreams. He'll have all of those gifts of the Spirit available depending on what the need is in the moment. And it's beginning right here. Verse 18, And immediately there fell from his eyes as it were scales, and he received his sight. And rising up, he was immersed, water baptized, and having received food, he was strengthened, and Shaul was with the taught ones at Damasek some days. And immediately he proclaimed the Messiah in the congregations that he is the son of Elohim. So now let's take a look at Shaul and the ministry that he's given. We're going to go to Acts chapter 13 and pick up with verse 1. It says, And in the assembly that was at Antioch, there were certain prophets and teachers, and you can read all those names there, verse 2. And as they were doing service to the master and fasted, notice, the set-apart spirit said, Yah, through His Spirit, is speaking to these prophets and these teachers. Separate unto me Barnaba and Shaul for the work to which I have called them. Then having fasted and prayed and having laid hands on them, they sent them away. So they, having been sent out by the set-apart spirit, the set-apart spirit of Yah sent them out to do the work of the ministry. So they, having been sent out by the set-apart spirit, went down to Selukeah, and from there they sailed to Cyprus. And having come into Salamis, they proclaimed the word of Elohim in the congregations of the Yehudim. And they also had Yohanan as an attendant. And having passed through all the island to Paphos, they found a certain magician, a false prophet, a Yehudi whose name was Bar Yehoshua, who was with the proconsul Sergius Paulus, a man of understanding. This man, having called for Barnaba and Shaul, earnestly sought to hear the word of Elohim. So the proconsul wanted to hear the word of Elohim, and he called upon Barnaba and Shaul to deliver it. But Elumas, the magician, for so his name is translated, withstood them. 
Now you remember we read in the Torah portion that Pharaoh and his army and his horsemen and his chariots came out against Israel and the cloud went from before Israel to behind Israel to defend Israel and the cloud was darkness to the Mitzrites, to the Egyptians, and it was light to Israel. And so Yah used the cloud and the fire to fight the battles of Israel. We're going to see the same thing happening right here in this account. But Elumas, the magician, for so his name is translated, withstood them, seeking to turn the proconsul away from the belief. Then Shaul, who also is Paul, filled with the set-apart spirit, led by the set-apart spirit of Yah, empowered by Yah through His Spirit, looked intently at Him and said, O son of the devil, filled with all deceit and all recklessness, you enemy of all righteousness, shall you not cease perverting the straight ways of Yah? He's declaring a judgment on him. And now see, the hand of Yah is upon you. And you shall be blind, not seeing the sun for a time. You remember the Mitzrites were in darkness? And so this magician is also going into darkness. And instantly a dark mist fell on him. And he went around seeking someone to lead him by the hand. And having seen what took place, the proconsul believed being astonished at the teaching of the master. Hallelujah. Well, I want to take it right into where we are today. These times that we're living in. The scripture says that in the last days, perilous times will come and we are living in perilous times. And that's why this message is so important because we need to learn to develop a deep interaction and involvement with the set-apart spirit of Yah. We need to learn to seek out and to obey the leadership that comes through the cloud and the fire if we're going to navigate through these treacherous waters that we're in, these perilous days that we're seeing. And so I want to start by saying that in the end times, some shall fall away from the belief. And that's why we have to be very well connected with Yah through His Spirit and well connected with His leadership and His guidance for us to get through these days that we're in. 1 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 1. But the Spirit distinctly says, this is Elohim speaking through His Spirit, that in latter times, some shall fall away from the belief. In other words, believers are going to fall. That's why we have to follow the cloud and we have to follow the fire. And we have to receive information from the Father through visions and dreams. We have to receive the empowerment of the Spirit to be able to be successful in these days that we're living in. The Spirit distinctly says that in latter times some shall fall away from the belief Notice what they're going to do. Paying attention to misleading spirits. See, there are deceiving spirits, misleading spirits out there, and they want to deceive believers from the belief. They want you to fall away. You got to be dialed in to the set-apart spirit of Yah so that you're not misled by these deceiving spirits. And teachings of demons, verse 2, speaking lies in hypocrisy. They're hypocritical and they're speaking lies. Having been branded on their own conscience. In other words, having a conscience that doesn't work anymore because it's seared with a hot iron. These are things that are going to be happening in the days that we're, that we're living in. So that's why we need to be connected to Yah through His Spirit. Then 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 beginning with verse 3, says this, Let no one deceive you in any way, because the falling away, that's what we're talking about, 
is to come first. And the man of lawlessness is to be revealed, the son of destruction. This is talking about the anti-Messiah is going to be revealed after the falling away has taken place. Who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called Elohim or that is worshipped so that he sits as Elohim in the dwelling place of Elohim, showing himself that he is Elohim. We have to be so connected to Elohim that we're not deceived by all of this. Do you not remember that I told you this while I was still with you? And now you know what restrains for him to be revealed in his time. What is the what that restrains for the anti-Messiah to be revealed in his time? It's the falling away. The falling away is the what. The falling away must happen first. And then the anti-Messiah will be revealed. For the secret of lawlessness is already at work. There is a work of power. Another translation says the mystery of lawlessness. It is a dynamic of power. It's a work that produces lawlessness in people. We see it in religion everywhere. And why is that important? Because the lawless one is going to rise up out of an environment of lawlessness. So the secret of lawlessness, this, this dynamic, this work of darkness is producing an environment of lawlessness from which the lawless one will arise. For the secret of lawlessness is already at work only until he who now restrains comes out of the midst. The he who now restrains is the anti-Messiah. The anti-Messiah restrains the coming of Yeshua. All right, that's what this is talking about. Until he who now restrains the coming of Yeshua comes out of the midst, comes up out of the midst of the people. Speaking of the anti-Messiah. And then the lawless one shall be revealed. Then you'll see him whom the master shall consume with the spirit of his mouth or the breath of his mouth and bring to naught with the manifestation of his coming. Now, Yeshua taught about many false prophets rising up in the last days. Let's look at that. Matthew chapter 24, beginning with verse 11. Yeshua said, And many false prophets shall rise up and lead many astray. We don't want to be led astray by false prophets. How are we going to keep from being led astray by false prophets? We're going to stay connected with the cloud and the fire. We're going to stay put as long as the cloud hasn't moved. When the cloud moves, we're going to go with the cloud. The cloud will tell us where to go, when to go, if we're to stay, what we're to say. Hallelujah. And that's how we're going to keep from being deceived. And many false prophets shall rise up and lead many astray. And because of the increase in lawlessness, because of the increase in lawless behavior, in other words, living like there is no law, the love of many shall become cold. The Torah says love to Elohim is obedience. Lawlessness is disobedience. And so there's going to be an increase in disobedience. And because disobedience is increasing, then the love of many shall become cold. Well, many believers are going to fall away, are they not? But he who shall have endured to the end shall be saved. How are you going to get to the end? Follow the cloud. Follow the fire. Hallelujah. Verse 24, for false messiahs and false prophets shall arise and they shall show great signs and wonders so as to lead astray, if possible, even the chosen ones. So we don't want to be led astray by the great signs and wonders of the false messiahs and false prophets. So to avoid that, we're going to stay connected with the set-apart spirit of Yah. We're going to follow the cloud and the fire because we know the lawless one is coming. 
If we read about that in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, starting with verse 9, the coming of the lawless one is according to the working of Satan, of Hasatan, with all power and signs and wonders of falsehood and with all deceit of unrighteousness in those perishing. In other words, deception that leads to unrighteousness in people who are perishing because they did not receive the love of the truth. If you don't love the truth, you are going to be deceived. You're going to be deceived unto unrighteousness because they did not receive the love of the truth in order for them to be saved. You have to have a love of the truth to be saved. Not just saved in the sense of your being being saved, but saved from deception. And for this reason, Elohim sends them a working of delusion for them to believe the falsehood. He's ultimately just going to turn over people who do not love the truth. He's going to turn them over to their unrighteousness. He's going to turn them over to the deception that they're in. In order that all should be judged who did not believe the truth, but have delighted in the unrighteousness. Well, we're not sons of darkness. We are sons of light. We have revelation by the Spirit of Yah. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, beginning with verse 1. Now, brothers, as to the times and the seasons, you do not need to be written to, for you yourselves know very well that the day of Yah comes as a thief in the night. For when they say peace and safety, this is not talking about you, believers. It's talking about them, those who are being deceived, those who do not love the truth. They're going to be saying peace and safety, everything's just fine. Then suddenly destruction comes upon them as labor pains upon a pregnant woman. And they shall not escape. But you, brothers, are not in darkness. No, you, you have the light. The cloud was light for the children of Israel. Darkness for the enemies of Israel. The enemies of Elohim were in darkness. But you, brothers, are not in darkness, so that this day should overtake you as a thief. For you are all sons of light, sons of revelation, and sons of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. So then, we should not sleep as others do, but we should watch and be sober. For those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who get drunk are drunk at night. But we who are of the day should be sober, putting on the breastplate of belief and love, and as a helmet, the expectation of deliverance. Because Elohim did not appoint us to wrath, to his wrath, but to obtain deliverance through our master, Yeshua, Messiah. Hallelujah. Now, I want to leave you with three things that you are not to do. Do not do these things. If you want to be led and guided through these tumultuous times, if you want to be empowered to prophesy, if you want to be empowered by gifts of the Spirit, if you want supernatural communication through visions and dreams, if you want Yah to fight your battles for you, then don't do these three things. The first one's found in Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 30. It says, And do not grieve the set-apart spirit of Elohim by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Don't grieve. Don't sadden. Don't disappoint the set-apart spirit of Elohim. Don't disappoint Elohim. He's given you His spirit. How do we disappoint Elohim? It says, Let all bitterness and wrath, and displeasure, and uproar, and slander be put away from you, along with all evil. So if you embrace bitterness, 
you're grieving the Spirit. If you embrace anger, wrath, you're grieving the set-apart Spirit. If you embrace displeasure and uproar and slander and evil, then you're grieving the Spirit. And if you grieve the set-apart Spirit of Elohim long enough, then the next thing happens. It's found in Acts chapter 7, starting with verse 51. It says, You stiff-necked and uncircumcised in heart and ears, you always resist the set-apart spirit. As your fathers did, you also do. Which of the prophets did your fathers not persecute? And they killed those who before announced the coming of the righteous one, of whom you now have become the betrayers and murderers, who received the Torah as it was ordained by messengers, but did not watch over it, did not obey it. So if you grieve the Spirit long enough, then you're going to come to a place where your heart becomes hard and you start resisting the set-apart Spirit. You don't want the leadership of the Spirit. You don't want the conviction of the Spirit. You don't want to follow the cloud and the fire. You want to go your own way. And if you resist, if you disobey, if you get over into disobedience and you continue in that, then this final thing can happen. It's found in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 19. It says, do not quench the Spirit. Like a candle that has a little flame on it, you can put your thumb and your finger together and just quench it. If you stay in disobedience and your heart gets hard and your neck is stiff and you resist and you resist and you resist, then ultimately you can quench the Spirit. And then you've lost the guidance of Elohim. You've lost all those things that the Spirit provides. You don't have the tools anymore to be able to help you succeed in these perilous days that we're living in. So don't quench the Spirit. Some of you may be asking, how do I receive the set-apart Spirit? Well, you have to believe, obviously. To be water baptized is the place where your heart is circumcised. Yeshua taught about how to receive the Spirit in Luke chapter 11, beginning with verse 9. He says here, And I say to you, Ask, and it shall be given to you. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened to you. For everyone asking receives, and he who is seeking finds. And to him who is knocking, it shall be opened. So you need to ask, you need to seek, and you need to knock. Verse 11. And what father among you whose son asks for bread shall give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, shall give him a snake instead of a fish? Or if he asks for an egg, shall give him a scorpion. If you then, being wicked, with the capacity to sin, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more, I love those three words together, how much more shall your Father from heaven give the set-apart spirit to those asking Him. If you've never believed upon Yeshua, today is the day to believe. And then follow in obedience to be water baptized. And just as Yeshua came up out of the water when He was baptized, when He was immersed, He began to pray, then start praying for the set-apart spirit. Start praying for the cloud. Start praying for the fire. Start praying for the leadership and the guidance of Elohim. 
Pray that you would be empowered to prophesy with boldness. Pray that Elohim would speak to you through visions and dreams. Pray that the gifts of the Spirit would be in manifestation in your life so that you can not only navigate through treacherous waters and these perilous days that we're living in, but you can also be used by Elohim through His Spirit to expand His kingdom through all those wonderful gifts of ministry. Pray. Start asking. Start seeking. Start knocking. The greatest prayer that a believer can pray is to be filled and to be refilled with the set-apart spirit. And when the cloud and the fire comes upon you and the spirit enters you, then you allow Elohim to guide you. The more you submit to his leadership and his guidance, the more successful and powerful you will be in the spirit. Don't go if he says don't go. If he says rise up and go, go. Go where he tells you to go. Say what he tells you to say through his spirit. Receive the empowerment of Yah through His Spirit. And begin to operate in the gifts of the Spirit. That's what we need more than anything in the days that we're living in. Times are going to get more difficult. And we need to nurture a greater interaction with the set-apart Spirit of Yah so that we can receive information and guidance and leadership and also have the power necessary to be able to accomplish all that Yah has given us to do in the name of Yeshua. Hallelujah.